Okay, and welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. So I thought I'd try to make a magnetic amplifier that can amplify audio and stuff. So I've wound these two toroids, and I've wound 200 turns on each of these toroids. And these are eventually going to become the transformers in the magnetic amplifier probably wondering how I wound 200 turns on a toroid. Well, a lot of time and a lot of patience. But before I turn these into transformers, let's just take a look at the schematic that we're going to use. So, this is the schematic. I did not design this, but this is what I'm going to replicate. So, first thing we need to do is I need to make sure that both of these have the exact same inductance. So I know these two are not perfect. There's going to be a little bit of um, difference between the two. There might be like 10 millihenries or something like that. So whichever one of these has more inductance, I will just take turns off until they both match. Right, so let's do this thing. I'm going to measure this one first. Let's see what its inductance is. Hopefully we've got continuity. And it still says over range. Okay, maybe it's a little too high, so let's go to the high inductance. Okay, yeah, there we go. We've got almost 230 millihenry. So this in this one's 229.6. Let's see what the other one is. I've already forgotten what the one I just measured was. It was 29, wasn't it? And this one is not making any contact. Okay, this one's 191.5, so we just need to take a few turns off this one. Alright, I got these both as close as I can. There's only about a millihenry or so of difference between the two now, so I don't think that's going to be too much trouble. Anyway, before I turn those into transformers, because I'm going to wind 25 turn primaries on those, we do need an oscillator. So. This is the oscillator that I'm going to use. Now this was a um, this little thing here. It's going to be a little half bridge inverter circuit that never really saw the light of day. So, and for those of you who want to see a schematic, let me just find the schematic. So um, normally um, you'd have a capacitor connected here and another capacitor connected there. And where those two capacitors connect, you'd connect one end of the coil, and then the other end of the coil would go there, but I'm going to do it this way, so we've got a capacitor here, and a coil here. That's actually supposed to be both the coils, by the way, I've just drawn it as one, but... You know, just imagine that as the two coils connected in series. So, that's the boring waffle out of the way, let's see if this thing works. Got the little oscillator circuit, hooked up to my scope. And these two light bulbs are in series with the power supply. Just in case I F something up, the current's going to go through those bulbs rather than all of it going through this. So, I'll turn the power on. On the camera by hand. And we get nothing. I don't know why. The light bulbs didn't come on, so there's no short circuit, but I think maybe it's my power supply, because it's, it's a little bit dodgy, this connection here. Oh, I, I saw a square wave on the scope just then. Yeah, there we go. So that's working. Okay, so I'm not sure how well this is going to work. So I go in a little oscillator circuit, hooked up to this gate drive transformer that I made. See, I'm a little bit concerned that we might get reverse voltage spikes. So I want to make sure that this is going to be alright, so... 
got my scope probe set to 10x, so if we see some big spikes on the scope when I turn this on, we will know. So, let's see what we get. Well, it looks alright. Not seeing any sign of any big spikes, so let's just switch this on to 1x. It's always good to make sure. Turn that back to 1x. Let's see what wave we get. And that looks alright. If I could just hold that on there. So it looks like we're not getting any big voltage spikes off the coil. That's good. I'm going to move my scope probe onto the actual coil though. So, the scope probe is after the capacitor. Let's see what we get. Okay, well that doesn't look so good. I think we're going to need a bit of a more beefier capacitor, but... We're not getting any huge voltage spikes, so this really isn't a bad thing at the and just for the hell of it, let's see what waveform we get at the other side of the coil. Yeah, I'd say that's the same. Okay, so with all those wires strewn about the place, we're going to get some parasitic capacitances and inductances. So, I've removed those, replaced that wimpy little capacitor with this one, also added a resistor in line with the circuit, and now we're getting a much better waveform at the output of the transformer. Just need to wind 25 turns onto each of these, so we have a transformer instead of an inductor, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. So, I've got the primary wound onto these transformers now. I'm going to call the 25 turn turn I'm winding the primary and the 200 turn the secondary, because it's just, it's just easier that way. So I've done both of those, and I've got one of them which I'm about to test. So, we have about an 8 to 1 ratio, winding ratio here, so if I put 12 volts into the primary, I should get about 96 volts out the secondary. I've got my oscilloscope probe set to 10x. So let's just apply some power and see what we get. Okay, that's, um, that's looking pretty good. So the scope says we've got about 180 volts coming out. Now that's peak to peak. We've got a little bit of overshoot, but I don't really think that's going to be a problem. Alright, so let's keep that one in mind. I'm now going to connect up the other one and we'll see what we get. Right, let's see what this one gives us. And yeah, I'd say that's working almost as good. This one's only giving us about 176 volts. I think that's going to be too much of an issue, so yeah. Okay, we're almost ready to build this thing. Got our two transformers here, and over here all the other necessary parts. Well, what I want to do first is, I want to make sure I've got these phased properly, because I want to make sure that the voltage that we get out of these transformers is as close to zero as possible. So if we get something around 200 to 300 volts out of this thing, I'll know the transformers are the wrong way around. Now where did I put that eraser? Eraser should have a Z in it. Because it's array Z. Uh, not array S. Uh, like laser. Laser should have a Z in it because it's lay Z. Uh, not lay S. Uh, and I'm just waffling on. So let's uh, let's see what we get. And as expected, one of the transformers is the wrong way around, because we're getting 266 volts out of that, so one of these transformers is the wrong way around. All we need to do is just flip the primary or the secondary on one of these transformers, and everything will be just fine. Well, here we are. It's all built now and ready to test. I have no idea how well this is going to work or even if this is going to work. Got the two current limiting bulbs. 
just to limit the current should anything go wrong. Got some further current limiting via this 10 ohm resistor here. This speaker is going to be the output speaker. And this speaker over here, sitting on this transformer, which is probably not the best place to put a speaker, going to use as a kind of a microphone. So, let's turn this on and see if it works. Right, I'm just going to briefly connect this, make sure nothing weird happens. Okay, well, I didn't get anything so far, so I'm going to connect that up full. Now, I think no, I haven't. I'm just going to turn this up halfway. Make sure nothing's getting hot or shorting out. Right, I'll connect. I connect up my battery and see if anything happens. And I can hear a tiny little bit of sound out of the um, microphone speaker, which is kind of weird. No sign of any amplification. Okay, well, looks like we've got some debugging to do, so... Okay, I'm feeling really dumb right now. So I spent the better part of um, yesterday going over this circuit, trying to figure out why it wasn't working. But it did not occur to me to check that every component that I was using is good. And I think I found the culprit. This potentiometer right here. If we look on the meter, you can see I'm measuring across the, put, um, the wiper and the end terminal of the potentiometer, and you can see it's reading open. And as I turn this, Half of I was actually showing it in the camera. You can see that it's just continuously reading open. So I think that's our problem right there. So there's your problem. Right, so I have replaced the variable resistor. Now, my first speculation was that maybe the coils weren't saturating because no matter what I did, this waveform didn't change. But now I've replaced this when I turn that when I connect the ba when I connect the bias battery and adjust this knob. You see that the waveform does change. So let's see if we can get some amplification out of this thing. I think I'm gonna have to call this experiment a fail. Because although we have saturation now, as you can see. No matter what I use for an audio source, I am just not getting any amplification at all. Right now, I've got it connected into this piece of crap right here. I just started it playing, and there is absolutely nothing. No sign of any amplification whatsoever. No matter what I do. So yeah, I think we're just going to have to call this a fail. I'm going to leave you with something a little bit more entertaining. Oh, there's someone at the door. I wonder who that could be. Oh, hi, Jane. Long time no see. Wow, you've really let yourself go. Clement, darling... I love you. I haven't seen you for years and years and years. Oh, pardon me. I haven't done a jolly good fart in a million years, I should say. Come, darling, where's your fridge? I haven't eaten in three seconds. I'm getting withdrawal symptoms. Well, the fridge is in the kitchen, Jane. You know where it is. You've been here before. All right. Thank you, Clem. Jane, you just scuffed everything in the fridge. And you've even eaten the fridge. 
Oh, I need to sit down now. My legs are about to give way under all the weight of all the food I've eaten. Oh, watch out, Jane, you're causing an earthquake. I need to get up again and get more food. Help me out the chair. <coughs> no, it's not happening. Come on, Clem, we can do it. <coughs> Thank you, Clement, my dear. Give me a nice big hug. Okay, Jane, but I don't think I'll be able to get my arms around all of you. Hug tight, hug. Lemon, let go, you're squeezing too tight. <laughs> Sorry, Clement. You squeezed me so tight, you squeezed all the air out of me, and I just farted and blew your house down. <laughs> Well, don't you laugh at me, Jane. My computer's in there. I'll get you a new one. How much did it cost? More than you can afford, Jane. Um, Jane? Why are you looking at my house like that? Jane, you just ate my house. Or at least what was left of it. And I'm still hungry. I know, I'll just go down to the store. Oh no, now next door I've got their music on again. Oh no, wait, she's eating their house as well. Well, i better follow her to Tesco. Oh, I just said the name of the store. Never mind. Later on, outside the store. Jane? Jane? Are you around here anywhere? Jane? Oh, what's that noise? The whole store is shaking. It looks like it's about to fall down. What the? Jen's just come out of the roof of the store and she's like 50 feet big. And I'm still hungry. I know. I'll eat the parking lot. Oh, I think I just ate Clement as well. Jen, get me out of here. It's all right, Clement, you'll come out eventually. I'm not coming out of there. Oh well, here I am in Jane's belly, just waiting to be digested. I can see everything she's eaten today. She just swallowed it whole. Oh, there's something else coming down. It's... it's the planet Earth! She's eaten the entire planet! And I'm still hungry!